What is up, everybody? It's Thursday, September 8th, and this is your Daily Dog Take. We are, we've got NFL football tonight. We've got Browns football in, what is it, what, three days. I'm joined by the really, the really awesome and very handsome uh, co-host of Panthers on Tap, Mr. Bryson. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm great, man. I appreciate you guys having me on, talk some football, and uh, kind of get into a little bit of Brown secrets and Panther secrets. So, I do enjoy. I, I do enjoy this. I, um, you know, last year I didn't. I just did mainly Browns podcasts, and I've jumped on with with you a couple of times this year. And I just really enjoy just getting outside perspectives and guys that just don't see our team the way we see our teams, and then just being able to 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 do that. Um, before we jump right on into it, we're going to cover the Carolina Panthers offense today, uh, and then we'll cover the defense tomorrow. Um, I've got my first platform beer right here. We're going to try that here. Guys, if you don't have anything to do and you're like, what am I going to do? Watch the game on Sunday, head over to platform uh, brewery on Lorraine, just off of Lorraine Ave Avenue in Ohio city, Nick and Ed and I will be doing a live show at 11 AM uh, pregame show. There's supposedly some special guests coming and uh, then we'll watch the game and probably do a post game party after that. All right, Bryson, I just want to jump right on into it. We're going to go to the offense. So I'm going to give you the, probably the most general topic, <laughs> general setup you're going to get when it comes to this. But what is it when you think about the Carolina Panthers offense and you're like, this is why I believe they can win this football game. What is the biggest quality uh, that they have going right now? Yeah, I think right now, uh, coming into the season, the Panthers are relatively healthy, um, which is something that you can't say too often about the Panthers' offense, especially regarding Christian McCaffrey. So uh, he's definitely the identity of the offense. And us as Panthers fans are going to learn a lot uh, within the first game because we have a new offensive coordinator, Ben McAdoo, coming in from all over the league. Uh, he was not a popular choice at the beginning uh, for the offensive coordinator position for Carolina, um, but he's kind of grown on fans a little bit. Uh, he is he does have the background of the previous head coaching, which I think Matt Rule was kind of looking for this offseason because Matt Rule, you know, came straight from college and has not been doing great uh, to start his NFL career. So uh, he brought in McAdoo, uh, Steve Wilkes, who was the interim for Carolina for a while, and then um, I, he got a year coaching job in uh, Arizona. So um, he's a secondary coach. They brought him in. Um, but, yeah, I think the offensive identity uh, is something that uh, we're going to learn week one. But uh, I think if – Look outside looking in. I think it's easy to tell they're gonna they're gonna run everything through Christian McCaffrey first, um, for better or worse. Uh, hopefully he can withstand that. Uh, but uh, they they do have you know the wide receivers, which I think overall is a is a pretty good wide receiver core, starting with DJ Moore, um, then going to Robbie Anderson, and then Rashard Higgins, which you guys know pr pretty well out of Cleveland. Uh, Baker and Higgins have been connecting all. Uh, off season uh, in in the uh, training camp, uh, been having a great off season together. Uh, I was at a training camp in Spartanburg uh, where Carolina does their training camps, and he threw Baker threw a fifty yard touchdown to Higgins, and it was it was it was a thing of beauty. And we haven't seen a whole lot of that in Carolina in a while, unfortunately. So, uh, and then after Higgins, you have the uh, the talented second round wide receiver that they drafted two years ago, Terrace Marshall Jr. at LSU. And then they just traded for a wide receiver from Jacksonville, LaVisca Chenault, who was a second round pick a couple of years ago. So pretty talented wide receiver core um, from top to bottom, I think, in, in, in my opinion. And then tight end room, not so pretty. <laughs> they probably have one of the worst tight end rooms in the league, honestly. Uh, Ian Thomas and then Tommy Tremble, who I am a fan of. He is He's a younger, I think he was drafted two years ago as well, uh, out of Notre Dame. Um, he's still developing as a as a pass catching tight end more of a blocking tight end but uh he does have some talent there so uh as a whole i think the panthers are going to try to run the ball and then um maybe try to get some passing off of the run game you know i, I i'm a big steve wilkes fan he did spend uh some time as the defensive coordinator in cleveland um, oh, yeah, that's right. i think it was just the one season because he came in i think at the i thought he came in with 
Hugh Jackson maybe, and then when Hugh got fired, no, that was Greg Williams. Um, they all bleed together, man. <laughs> all the coaches and the coordinators, they all bleed together, and I can never remember it. I'm a huge proponent of that, though, bringing in coordinators and position coaches that have had coaching experience, especially in your first stop. You know, uh, Bill Callahan comes in when when Kevin Stefanski gets here and he brings him in, you know, and um, – brings in Joe Woods who didn't have, you know, the he- a lot of head coaching experience or anything like that, but he brought him in, you know, kind of trying to bring in these pedigree guys. I totally get it. I, I think assistant coaches matter more than uh, some fans tend to think. Uh, so I do like that. I do like that strategy. That's what Freddie Kitchens tried. He brought in a whole bunch of – too bad he was just a really, really bad head coach himself. <laughs> he did bring in a bunch of guys that had the experience, and he did that. I'll tell you this. I'll say this because fans uh, – Browns fans will uh, – echo this you know Richard Higgins he's not the fastest he's fastest he's not the most athletic but he just gets open and catches the ball and you're just like okay hey th- there he is he caught the I don't know I don't care he's you know and dude got helmet to helmet hit, hit against KC that kept him out of the playoffs or kept him out of the AFC championship game because it didn't get called so I so okay I do hope Christian McCaffrey is successful because I did draft him in my fantasy league this year uh, for our network uh, fantasy so you know it's like let's 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 you know i i just hope jay i think that is to me that's a number one matchup for the browns if they want to win it's jok versus christian mccaffrey can jok limit him in the passing game yeah the running game i think it's it's (laughs) our run defense isn't great but you know i i do think keeping McCaffrey from a swing pass turning into a 75 yard touchdown is probably JOK's main job. It should be uh, this weekend. So let's kind of pivot a little bit to the offensive line real quick. And we'll, then we'll kind of go some a little bit more specific at some of the positions. Where are you at with this offensive line? Are you, are you worried about it on Sunday? Do you think it's going to be improved from last year? I like Ike Aquanu a lot. I do believe that he is, I think he was probably the number two tackle. I like Devin Neal a little bit more, but I, I but I did think Icky's really really good. Now he does have to face Miles Garrett, but I will remind you that in his fourth start, I believe last year, Rashawn Slater had a pretty good game against Miles Garrett. He really rose to the occasion. So I've seen rookies raise the rise to the occasion of Miles Garrett. But where are you at with this offensive line? Yeah, so that, that's another area that Carolina has struggled with um, over the years. Offensive line, even with uh, when we had prime Cam Newton, uh, I, ever since we lost Jordan Gross, our left tackle that was here for 12 years, uh, it's probably going to be a pro bowler one day. Um, we've struggled to find somebody to fill in the left tackle and then everywhere else in the offensive line, basically. So uh, this year, um, it's actually Carolina Panthers fans feel much better about the offensive line than we have in a while. So starting with Iki Aquanu, I agree with you. Um, Evan Neal was my number one tackle in the draft as well, but Iki Kwanu was the, was the local kid out of NC state wearing the 704 chain at the draft. Um, and, and they loved him in, in Carolina and, uh, Iki Kwanu was the number one guy on their board overall. So, uh, he, he, he specializes in, in, uh, in the run game. He is, he's a, a nasty offensive lineman that likes to pancake and, uh, run over people. He, where he struggles is in in uh, in passing passing down. So um, he's he's worked a little bit on it. I know when he when he got into the league, Matt Rule came out and said Icky's not ready to be declared the starter. Uh, he's in a battle with Brady Christensen, who's a, who's the left guard now. And Brady Christensen's actually a pretty good left tackle on a, a very good left guard. So uh, then I think throughout the off season, uh, Iquan, you know got the reps that he needed and kind of developed into his own. So. I'm very worried about him going up against Miles Garrett. Like I had mentioned to you before, um, I view Miles Garrett as one of the best players in the NFL, uh, much less one of the best defensive players in the NFL. So uh, Miles Garrett scares me. Uh, they've Matt Rule's been asked multiple times, like, "What's your game plan for Miles Garrett with Icky Kwan? Are you going to leave him on an island? Are you going to give him help? Like, what's the game plan?" And um, <clears throat> Matt Rule's confident in Icky in, in Icky Aquanu, but he did say that. Uh, the game plan is to give Icky a little bit of help every now and then. So I'm sure we'll get some chips from Christian McCaffrey, who's an underrated uh, underrated blitz picker-upper at, at the running back position. So uh, he's just a, a stout little guy that will hit. And uh, and I think that that will help Icky a little bit. But, again, it's Miles Garrett. So um, 
we'll see what happens there. Not extremely confident. But uh, moving across the line, Brady Christensen, who I mentioned, uh, drafted a couple years ago out of BYU uh, as a as a left tackle. Kind of last year, Matt Rule didn't really know where to put him. Um, and then this year, he's kind of settled in at the guard position. Pretty good uh, guard, uh, in my opinion. And then center, um, there's actually a battle going on right now, which Carolina Panther fans don't understand. But uh, Pat Elfline, uh, who's not a good offensive lineman, uh, in my opinion, and uh, mm-hmm. Bradley Bozeman, who's the center from the Ravens, who's the Ravens center last year. Oh, yeah. They, they signed in the offseason. Um, Pat Elfline was listed as a starter this week. So, uh, we will see what happens, and you know we get to Sunday, and if Elfline still a starter or not. But uh, as as it is now, he is the starter. And then, but uh, Austin Corbett, you guys know uh, well in Cleveland, uh, he is our right guard, and then our uh, right tackle, who's been our right tackle for years, who's one of the best right tackles in the league, is Taylor Moten. So um, overall, we we feel we feel decent about the offensive line, much better than we have in the in the past couple of years. That's. I like, I know exactly what you're talking about because like until 2020, when, you know, Stefanski and Barry arrived and kind of remade that with Jack Conklin and they drafted Jed Wills and, you know, they locked down, uh, Batonio and whatnot. The Browns offensive line for, I mean, once, once Joe retired, when, when 73 retired, it was, it was some tough sledding over there at left tackle for a little bit. And, and Jed had some injuries last year. So I, I've seen Baker when he had a bad line and that was 2019 with, and now that was Freddie kitchens. And that was just, a, I don't put any of 2019 on Baker. Like I, I just, I, I don't know how much of 2019 Baker you've seen, but do not don't watch it. It's not fun. <laughs> and I also don't think it's indicative of what kind of football player he is. I, I, I just don't think it is. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I, I do like the interior of that line quite a bit, but that's interesting that you've got kind of a little situation at center. Cause I also agree that Pat Alpha, I, I wanted Pat Alphine to be a pretty good uh, offensive lineman considering where he went to school, but uh, yeah. he, he has not just like Billy price. So Billy price was one of my favorite Ohio state Buckeyes uh, coming out. Then he just o- almost single-handedly got Joe Burrow murdered f- for a couple of years there. <laughs> in Cincinnati ends up having a pretty good year actually in the, with the giants last year. And I was like, Hey, well, maybe we'll sign him as a backup. Yeah. This is what happens. This is what happens when you talk to me at 10 o'clock at night. We just ramble about football. Well, <laughs> well, well Elfine has had an interesting career because I think he was drafted in 2018 and was a, his rookie year was an all pro, like a, a pro bowler, I believe. And oh, uh, yeah. at, at center. So he like started off like, wow, with the Vikings, we got this pro bowl center and then they moved him to guard and he literally just sucked so bad that they cut him next year. So, uh, and then I think he's, you know, he's battled some injuries and stuff. So he's trying to transition back into the center position, I think. But uh, he played center last year for Carolina, and, and he was okay. He was not something that you would roll back into the next season, I believe, and, and feel comfortable about him being your starter. So that's why they brought in Bradley Bozeman. They signed him in free agency from the Ravens. He was a pretty sought after center in yeah. free agency as a whole. So, uh, but I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, they, they do this a lot in Carolina world where they won't name a starter and they'll like on the, on the depth chart, they'll put Pat Elfine or Bradley Bozeman or uh, Chuba Hubbard or uh, Donta Foreman. It's just like they're scared to name a starter and hurt feelings, but I really think Bozeman is the starter, but okay. I, you know, I, I can't say for certainty. Yeah, it's like it's like I I uh, we talked about this last night uh, on your show. Like I was like I don't know what's going on at right tackle. I don't think Jack Conklin's going to be out there. And then he practiced practice it. Oh goodness, practiced again today. And Stefanski's like, yeah, like he could play. And I'm just like, listen, if he's not a hundred percent, man, like do not roll Conklin out there because he's such an athletic tackle and it's his meniscus. And I just don't need to see it get. I'm sorry, it's not the meniscus. I can't think of what it is. The patella tendon. Uh-huh. Um. That really bad one. Okay, so let's wrap up this offensive, uh, uh, this uh, Panthers offensive. Uh, I don't know what are we doing here. Preview. Oh my goodness, this is <laughs> not a good day for words, guys. It's not a good day for words. So if the Panthers win on Sunday, it will because they it will be because they did what offensively consistently on Sunday. Yeah, I think um, if Baker can stay out of his head and not make it all about the revenge game against Cleveland, which all reports coming out of Carolina is that Baker is focused on winning the game. He's not 
set on, you know, getting his his revenge against Cleveland and he's going to F them up or whatever Cynthia Freeland said, made up uh, that he said. But, uh, but yeah, I think if, if, if he can stay focused and if they can get the run game with Christian McCaffrey and uh, Deontay Foreman, who I think is one of the better running uh, backup running backs in the league, he, he came in last year for uh, – for Derrick Henry in uh, Tennessee and had a 170 yard rushing game in the playoffs. So uh, he's, he's a grounded pound running back that is going to be a good compliment to Christian McCaffrey. So I think that if they can, if those two things happen, then I think that the Panthers have a, a, a chance to win on Sunday. All right, man. I really appreciate it. I will talk to you again tomorrow to talk about the Panthers defense. So really appreciate your time tonight, man. Uh, go check them out over at Panthers on tap. Great show. Was on there again last night. Really enjoy talking to you guys over there, and I'm glad you took some time to talk to me. Guys, appreciate you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Go Browns.